Well, well, well. Here's Mama Bloom's brood. Another evening in the Bloom home. Mama and the two girls are present, but apparently Yetta won't be for long. She's dressed in street clothes, and as she rushes toward the front door, she says... Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye, Sally. Watch your brush. Well, I'm late now. Where are you going? Oh, no place in particular. If you're going no place in particular, how can you be late? Well, we want to get started, mm-hmm. Ma. Every night you go out, but it hurts you one night to stay home. I don't know what's the matter with girls. They worry you to death until you fix up a nice home. The minute you get it fixed up... They never stay in it. Oh, I'm home a lot. You're home a lot. When did you spend the evening here? Last night? Night before last? Oh, I was home a week ago Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you remind me? I would have bought you a medal. Well, what am I going to do if I stay home? I stay home. What do I do? Oh, it's different with you. What's different with me? Am I a vegetable? Oh, you're married. Mm -hmm. Sally's been home now three nights, and she hasn't even got a fever. So you see, even if you ain't married, staying home don't kill you. Oh, she's only home because Sydney's out of town. You don't really want me to stay home, do you, Ma? No, no, go ahead. If you'd stay home, you'd drive me crazy. But still, it wouldn't hurt you. Oh, let her go, Ma. Mm. Even if you go out, you could be home by 12 o'clock. Oh, now, there's no fun going out if I have to time myself. I know more than get started than I have to keep looking at my watch to see that I don't stay one minute after 12. Mm-hmm. You remember what happened to Cinderella? She stayed out after 12 and she turned into a pinch of salt. Where's Papa? He's shaving. What do you want, Fiddy? I'd like to have a dollar. Here's a dollar. Don't bother, Papa. Oh, thanks. Goodbye. Remember? 12 o'clock and not a minute later. Okay, goodbye. Bye. Why do you make her come in at 12 o'clock, Ma? 12 o'clock's late enough. If I ever have a daughter, believe me, she can stay out as late as she pleases. Mm, That's what you say now? No, I mean it. If I have a daughter and she wants to stay out until 2 or 3 in the morning, it's okay with me. Mm, Wait until you have a daughter. It'll be just the same then. What's the difference? You'll find out. Well, tell me. Hmm. Sarah, it's like this. Everybody's very broad-minded when it don't cost them anything. If somebody's driving an automobile and they hit the car in front of you and scratch it all up, that's an accident, and it couldn't be helped. But if they hit your car and put one scratch on the paint, then they're crazy drivers and should be put in jail. Right now, you don't own an automobile, so traffic laws to you mean nothing. Pretty soon, if you get an automobile... Then everybody should take driving lessons. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right now you haven't got a daughter, so she can stay out all night. But when you get a daughter, then she'll have to be home at 8 o'clock. I think you're wrong, Uh Ma. I thought my mother was wrong, too. And when she was my age, she probably used to fight every night with my grandmother about the same thing. Oh, people have changed. Mm -mm, No, people don't change. No, Sally, everything changes, but people stay the same. Dresses get shorter, dresses get longer. People used to ride on horses, now they ride on airplanes. But they're still the same people. If you stick a pin in them, they cry just like they used to. You tell them a joke and they still laugh. (laughs) It's human natural. Why, that's almost exactly what Shakespeare said. Well, then Shakespeare was right. Oh, I don't care if he was right or not. What's the matter with you, my king? Oh, Sidney. What did Sidney do? I didn't hear from him yesterday. Only one letter. You'll hear from him today. 
Ma, you don't suppose he could have been in an accident, do you? No, don't be silly. Well, maybe some automobile hit him. No automobile would dare run into Sydney. Well, I can't understand why I haven't heard from him. Maybe he's busy. Well, he shouldn't be too busy to call me up. If he really loved me, he'd put me ahead of business. Ah, uh, that ain't so, Sarah. I don't care how much he loves you. Still, he's got to tend up business for you. Well, how do you figure that? Love, my child, don't mean sitting around telling you how beautiful you are or standing under your window playing on a saxophone. Standing under my window? Playing? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's called by some woman's name. Uh, uh, serenading, I think. Oh, you mean serenading, Ma. Well, have it your way, serenading. If a man really loves a girl, he wants to get out and make good business. So she should have the nicest things. That's more important to him than making her compliments all day long. He wants her to have the best. And he can't get it for her if he stands under a window where it don't do no good. And besides, he might catch cold. Oh, maybe you're right, but I still wish he'd call up or something. I do, too. That's one thing I like about Sidney. He tends to business. Everybody knows that now, even Papa. Uh, why don't you ask Papa if he's heard from him? Well, I'm afraid to mention Sidney's name to Papa. I never know how he's going to take it. I'll ask him. Jay, hmm? are you finished shaving? I cut myself. I'm bleeding. Well, stop bleeding and come in. All right, no, no. Hell yeah, I am. What do you want? Jake, do you have to bleed on my best towel? Well, what can I do, Mom? I'm bleeding. Put on some peroxygen of iodine and come on in. You mean peroxide of hydrogen, Put Mom. on some medicine. Uh, did you ask me to come in so I could bleed for you personally? No, Papa. Where is Sydney today? Sydney? Am I a mind reader? I could tell you where he was yesterday. Yes, I could tell you where he was. <laughs> but I couldn't tell you why he went there or what he was doing after he got there. How do you know where he was? He wired him to send him $200. I know, I know. He wanted to take somebody to lunch. Lunch. Other people can do business in sample rooms, hotel lobbies, in club rooms or golf courses, but not Sydney. <laughs> Sydney can only do business when he's eating. Yeah, he's a food salesman. <laughs> Is he sending in orders? No, no, Mama. Sydney don't send in orders. He does business different. He sold the red uniform. One order doesn't mean a season's business. Mm -hmm. Eh, uh, Papa, where did you send the money? I sent it to Philadelphia. They're at in Philadelphia. It's our big place. The care of the telegraph company. Did he get it? Sure he got it. Who don't get $200 if it's waiting for him? Well, I can't understand the whole thing. Don't worry, don't worry. We'll hear from him tomorrow. He'll want some more lunch money. I'd like to hear from him tonight. Maybe he'll call up yet. When he does, I'll tell him a thing or two. Uh, uh that wouldn't do. Why not? He's calling you up, so it'll be to him a pleasure, and you're going to make it our duty. Don't take the enjoyment out of anything and then expect a man to like it. Oh, why don't you practice what you preach, Mama? Jake, I do all the time. Not with me. <laughs> you don't look so abused. You know how much I enjoy driving an automobile. And the minute I start, you start giving me orders so that there's no pleasure in driving. Must I be killed so that you can have a good time? How many times was you killed, Mama? Even once I wouldn't like well, it. Well, wait till you're killed and then holler. All this isn't settling where Sydney is. There is no law that we must find Sydney tonight. Well, he'll turn up all right. And then he does... He'll have a story that's worth waiting for. I'll answer it. Maybe it's Sydney. Yeah, maybe he's out of money. You sent $200 at noon. $200? <laughs> to Sydney, $200 is tips. Oh, hello, Sam. Hello, Becky. Hello, Jake. Hello, Sam. Is something uh, the matter? There's Sydney. Uh-huh, another one. I thought maybe Sally would know. Sally ain't heard from him. Uh, I got to find him right away. Oh, I'm getting so sick of the name of Sydney. He got to find him tonight. Why do you have to find him tonight? I just saw in the paper. There's a meeting tomorrow in Washington of that board... They buy uniforms. You know, I thought that was next week. It was pushed up a week. And all the salesmen have to be there at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning with samples. But couldn't you go or me? We did business before we ever heard of Sydney. Not uniform business, Jake. But we could try. It wouldn't be no good. You don't know what the goods cost. You don't know what they cost to make up. You don't know any details. Well, couldn't we look it up? Sure, if we had time. But we couldn't look it up, figure it out, and be in Washington at 9 o'clock in the morning ready to do business. I tell you, we got to find Sydney right away. Oh, Sydney, Schmidney. I wish Sydney had never been invented. Fishing won't do any good. We got to find him. And even if you find him, how do you know he could sell the order? Hmm, that much I'll give Sydney credit for. If he's in Washington and they let him talk, he'll sell them uniforms for soldiers that ain't even born yet. Still, if we can't find him, what good is it? Why don't you try looking for him? Oh, Becky, will you stop, please? Here we are going crazy and you're making vice cuts. Going crazy won't help any. Going sensible will. Oh, you... Uh, Sam. Yes? Did you try the hotel? I called up every hotel in Philadelphia. That's what makes me so late. I had the long-distance operator start with the A's and go through the whole list of hotels. Well, what did she say? He wasn't registered in any hotel. Did you try the telegraph company where the money was wired? Sure. He collected the money and they haven't seen him since. Maybe he was held up and robbed. <laughs> if anybody held up Sydney, he could talk them out of it and borrow their revolver besides. I don't know what to do. Me either. Uh, 
here's an order of maybe thousands of dollars. And just because Sydney hides in Philadelphia, we got to lose it. You ain't lost it yet. Well, I don't see how we can help losing it. So if you find Sydney, you get the order? Uh, Twenty years I've been married to you, and for the first time, Mama, for the first time, you're right. Then it's very simple. All we have to do is to find Sydney. Well, what do you think we've been talking about for the last half hour? The trouble is you've been talking, but not doing anything. All right, all right, Mama, you do something. I'll do the best I can. Even if we could find him, there's no train to get him there in time. Boys, find him, and then worry about the next thing. I'm going home. It's no use. Sam, don't give up so quick. Becky, do you know where Sydney is? No. Then don't aggravate but me. But if you don't get so excited, I'll do the best I can. What time is it? Time? Uh, six o'clock sharp. What's that got to do with it? Let it try. Oh, what good will it do? If we can't find them, how will she find them? What harm can it do? All right, all right, go ahead. If only to prove that you don't know what you're talking about. All right. Jake, dial me Maine 4931. Who is Maine 4931? Mrs. Fink. Fink? I'm looking for Sydney in Philadelphia, and she calls up Mrs. Fink in New York. Jake, dial me the number. But how would she know where Sydney was? Jake. Please, you'll dial her. All right, all right. All right, Mommy, here you are. Hello, Mrs. Fink. How are you? <laughs> this is Becky Bloom. How are you feeling? Thank you. We're all right, too. Yeah, you must come over sometime. What are you doing Tuesday? Hey, will you stop using so many words and it's find right, out where uh, Sydney is? Mrs. Sydney, Fink, Sydney. Mrs. Fink, what is your brother-in-law Isidore's last name and the phone number at the store? Oh, Mendel. Mendel, huh? Chestnut, toot, 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 toot. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Look, darling, Paul, call me up sometime, huh? Yeah, goodbye. Well, Mama, well. Long distance? Long distance. Long distance. Give me Chestnut, Friday. toot, 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 toot. Philadelphia. Yeah. All right, I'll hold the vial. Mama, Mama, who, who are you calling long distance? Sydney, Sydney, Jack. Oh, yes. Hello? Mendel? Is Mr. Sydney Schiff been there? He is, huh? Will you please call him to the phone? Yeah. All right, I'll hang on. Here you are, Papa. But uh, how did you know he was there? What is this place? That's Mendel's, the best kosher restaurant in Philadelphia. Yes, yes, but how did you know he was there? It's time to eat. It's six o'clock, and I just figured out where I would go if I was Sydney, and I called up and... There he was. <laughs>